Hey guys, welcome back. Um, obviously, we're super happy to have you here. Um, part of our advanced course, so you know, this is for, for everyone who is looking to achieve at the very, very highest level. We can go Stanford, UCLA, top schools. Uh, whole idea here is that you're looking for the ideas that are going to take you into the, the top 1%. Okay, so there's two concepts that you absolutely have to understand. You absolutely have to build it into your long-term planning. And essentially, these are the two things that are going to ultimately decide your outcome. Okay, so let's get into this. There's two of them, right? So the first one is utility, right? Utility. And then the second one is decision-making. So let's talk about utility for a second. What, what do we mean by utility? All right. So let's take a brain surgeon. Right. And we're going to compare our brain surgeon versus someone who folds t shirts. Right. Now, our brain surgeon is going to be making, you know, who knows, $20,000 per surgery. Okay. And our t-shirt folding guy is going to be making minimum wage, which is $11.50 an hour, something like that. All right. So we're going to say that this fellow over here has a fairly low utility. His skill set is not very in demand and his skill set isn't able to earn him any real remarkable opportunities. Okay. So now as an athlete, your utility is going to fall into four categories. So category number one is your technique, right? The way you form your shots, the way you throw the football, the way you read the defensive situations, everything to do with the technical aspect, okay? And what you're trying to do is you're trying to grow that to as high of a level as possible, right? So let's just use a tennis example. Um, if you don't have a very well-developed slice, and you play an opponent that calls for using a lot of low balls because that makes them uncomfortable, that's a strategy that you won't be able to deploy because you don't have that utility in your game yet, right? And so it doesn't matter really how strong you are, you know, you either have to avoid um, using that shot using a different tactic, but the assumption there is that that would be your A tactic and you'd have to use a B or a C or a D tactic making you less efficient at winning, okay? The next one is your athletic utility, right? How capable is your body, depending on the sport? How flexible are you? Um, how strong are you? How quick is your first step? What's your balance like? What's your endurance like? Everything to do with your athletic utility, okay? And what we see now is obviously the level of excellence across most sports has gone up over the years. And so there's a lot of demand on you to perform well there, right? Swinging back around to, to the tennis analogy, being a better athlete means you can get to the ball faster, right? You can build better contact points. And so you're able to hit better shots from those slightly difficult situations than the other guys. They don't need to play a defensive ball, you can play a neutral ball and possibly even an offensive ball from the same situation, increasing your options, increasing your viability as an athlete, right? Next one is your strategy utility, right? And obviously this is the learning part of every sport. You know, you look at professional football players, they get a, a journal that's five, six, seven hundred pages long of the plays that they need to learn, favorite plays of other teams, favorite defensive options against those plays and countermeasures and so on and so forth, right? So becoming a good strategist, right, is an essential part of being at the top of any field. So you're going to need to spend plenty of time watching, plenty of time analyzing, plenty of time doing pre-game assumptions and strategies and then measuring those against your post-game strategies and see how well your analysis of what the correct way to interact with the problem would be, okay? And then finally, we're gonna have your mental utility, right? 
the thoughts, the ideas that you have inside your head, how well are they doing with helping you to problem solve, to find motivation, um, to come up with a vision or a plan for how you'd like to develop yourself. Um, this one over here is, I would say, the most useful, but also the most dangerous one. And what I mean by that is your inner situation is going to cause you to make decisions, right? So if you're someone who's really fearful, you're going to make a decision based on that fear. Maybe you say, let me skip this tournament, I'm not ready, right? Let me, maybe you say, I don't want to use my slice, it's not ready for competition yet, right? And so what ends up happening is that all of the rest of this stuff is determined by your mentality, right? If you're someone who has a real liking for excellence, then most likely you're going to be technically excellent, right? If you're someone who's a raw competitor, doesn't care much about technique, it's the battle itself that's interesting for you, chances are you might leave that technical aspect and focus more on competitive, right? So pretty much how you think, right, is basically the first step. And I think a lot of people do it backwards. You know, they work on all of this stuff till the cows come home, um, but they never take the time to say, hey, I need to make sure my mind is at an excellent level, right? And then I think one of the most alarming, in my opinion, assumptions that a lot of people see is that you're born with or without a great mentality, right? Which I think is the biggest load of nonsense in the world because that would be similar to saying, without studying, I could get a degree in medicine. And that talented at medicine, they're just gonna bestow an honorary degree on me, right? It doesn't work that way. To develop a world-class winning mindset takes as much care, as much preparation, as much giving of yourself into that category and learning and trying and adapting and problem solving in this category as it does in any other category, right? So for the top athletes, you're constantly working on building your mindset, getting rid of ideas that don't work and adapting into practice, into match play, into lifestyle, into daily habits, ideas, that propel you towards your goal. Okay, so now swinging back to chapter two, which is gonna be the decision-making part, okay? So let's look at our brain surgeon. Let's look at some of these options, right? So he's gone to medical school, he's a brain surgeon. He could go into practice, right? Do actual brain surgeries. He could also become a brain surgeon YouTube star. Right, give up the practice, start making videos and decide, right, that's the direction I want to go, right? He could write some books. He could say, I'm sick of brain surgery and start doing some architecture, right? Now, those decisions on how to deploy your skill are some of the hardest decisions in the world, right? You look at a musician. What is her next song going to be about? She's going to sing about daffodils, she's going to sing about frogs, she's going to sing about current political events. How does she want to do this song? Does she want to do a duet with another current top performer? The decision on how to deploy your skill set is where a lot of people end up failing, right? Because even though they require the skill, their decision on when to attack when to stay back, when to train, what to train, and how to direct their skill set, which tournaments to choose, and so on and so forth, end up being the decisions that don't get them to the goal that they want, right? And so obviously, I think one of the key things you want to take away here is that you have to practice decision making, right? You have to take responsibility and you have to say, listen guys, let me handle this one. Let me make some calls here and let's see how well I'm doing with, with directing, right? And when you train, try to put yourself in situations where the cause and effect, right? The relationship between your decision 
and the outcome of that decision are well known. So that way you can go back in, just like any scientist would and be like, right, we gave patient A this medication, and this was patient A's results. Not as good as we'd hoped, or better than we hoped. Let's start building on that idea more, right? Unless you are fully accountable, and you're in that situation where that's something that you wish to achieve, right? You're blaming the coach, you're blaming the weather, you're blaming this, you're blaming that. Coach is making all the plays. I go to a lot of tournaments, I see parents telling their kids what to do, right? Disaster. Because what you're doing is you're taking away the opportunity to learn which decision would be better, right? Guiding and helping and going through decisions. Hey, why did you make that decision? Hey, why did you think it was the best choice? What was going in your head? Can you see any better options? Those sorts of questions are wonderful because it gets you into um, a situation where the goal is not winning or losing now, but instead winning the greater battle of developing super high utility skill set and then a super high skill in decisions on how to deploy it. All right, guys, of course, thank you very much for, for your time with us. I'm um, looking forward to launching the full mental toughness course here in the next couple of weeks, so, so stay on point for that. Um, it's going to be intense. We're going to go through a lot of utility in all four categories. Um, and obviously, one of the biggest things we're going to do is just go through um, some of the ideas that have become almost cliche that are actually not accurate. So we're going to weed out some of those and get you on an honest, real feedback, real feedback loop method of chasing your goals. Okay, so you guys have a wonderful training week and we will be back um, next week with, with another episode. Thanks guys. Bye.